welcome to Yahweh Christian Broadcast. I'm your host, Elkie Brabble. Thank you once again for tuning into this show today. You're going to get a blessing because God has really laid upon my heart a special message entitled just for you today. I want the Lord to speak directly to your heart no matter where you are in life. I pray that the Holy Spirit ministers to you throughout this whole 30-minute broadcast. So if you will, just open your heart, open your ears, ears to hear what the Lord God is saying to you today. So the title of this message is called Risky Business. And I'm not talking about the old movie, I think, by Tom Cruise, but Risky Business. So what in the world, Elkie, are you talking about when you say that? Well, do we have any risk takers out there listening? Any risk takers? How about any hardcore gamblers out there? Um, you know, we all kind of gamble on life, so to speak. And everything in life just about is a risk when you think about it. You risk taking a leap of faith. You risk sharing a new co starting a new company. You take a risk when you fall in love. You take a risk that your heart might get broke. You take a risk when you buy real estate or a new house or a car. You take a risk when you skydive. You take a risk when you drive a car. So, you know, what blew my mind one day is my husband came home from the golf course and he said, I won some money. I said, what do you mean you won some money? He said, we took some bets. He said, I took everybody's money on the 18th hole. I was like, you mean people gamble on the golf course? He said, yeah. And I said, why in the world would you gamble on the golf course? I said, that sport beats you up. It gets in your head. I said, and then you're going to go home and lose money on top of that. I said, I do not see the point in that. And he said, I said, why do y'all do that? And he said, because it adds a lot more interest to the game. It beefs up the comp competition. And he said, and it's fun. And I thought, fun my foot. I would be depressed, mad, and probably want to start a fight before I got in my car, you know? But I could not figure it out. Well, I personally have never liked gambling. And do you want to know why? Because if you lose at gambling, you get this, a big fat nothing. And that right there just unnerves me. You know, you don't get, when you gamble, you don't get a pair of shoes out of the deal. You don't get a new tube of lipstick not a chocolate chip cookie or nothing, no purse, nothing. It's a big fat zero. And that hurts my feelings. But at least, you know, when you go to Chuck E. Cheese, you get something. So, you know, if all those little kids were playing all those games and they couldn't go and win the little prize at the end, that the little plastic toy that's worth 10 cents that breaks in the car on the ride home, but they're all excited about their tickets. Even at Chuck E. Cheese, you get something, but not when you gamble at a casino. And so... Shopping don't leave you like that, ladies. Amen. Can I get an amen from the ladies out there? When you shop, at least you're getting something. So I just don't get the whole gambling thing. But, um, <laughs> and ladies, in, at this note, do you know how you can identify whether a skeletal bones, if there's nothing left but the bones and everything's gone, do you know how you identify whether those bones are male or female? Because if it's female bones, the feet bones will be pointed towards the mall. <laughs> you can go ahead and laugh. But anyway, that was funny to me. But I, I understand that there's many people who bet on a lot of things. Every th type of sports, there's betting. Racing with horses, all kinds of stuff. And then there's lottery tickets. And I am so glad for the gas pumps at the station now where you can just go and swipe your card and don't have to walk in because God bless you. If you walk in, you're going to be standing behind a line like Black Friday at Walmart waiting for everybody to purchase these lottery tickets. And while I'm standing there waiting for my purchase, which I must want pretty bad, I was just looking and I thought, wow, every time they're getting a ticket, it's this much. And I thought, good gracious, you can really get addicted to that. But let me ask you this. Is gambling considered a sin in the Bible? Let's talk about it. Since the Bible doesn't explicitly say, hey, thou shalt not gamble, or gambling is a sin, avoid it at all cost, Christians should ask themselves, will this help me? Will this harm me? Or will this hinder my walk with God in any type of way? Well, let's see what God does say in His Word. In Matthew 6, 24, the Bible declares you cannot serve both God and mammon, which is money. So you can't have two masters. 
Gambling can put a person into a position of being mastered by addiction and debt. In Proverbs 25, 28, it says, and, and I really, I'll probably say this scripture twice because it's really important. Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks control. A city back in the biblical days who didn't have a fortified wall was like a, their, their life was wide open for attack. And the same thing God is saying, like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control man or woman that could be in any area of our life when our walls are down we lack self-control any of the areas in our lives that are not balanced God wants us to be balanced first Timothy 6 10 declares for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil you trace any kind of evil in the world corruption in government corruption in businesses corruption corruption and you trace it back to the love of money the Bible warns us to stay away from the love of money, not to have money because we all need it. We need money, but not to have the love of it, that, that desire for money, 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 and it supersedes our walk with God. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, it says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. There's a word for us right there. Be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. Are you content with what you have? You know, I've prayed that, Lord, help me to be content with what I have. Let me be happy in the moment. Solomon, the wisest king that ever lived and the richest king who ever lived, who had everything, luxury was his middle name. There was nothing that he wanted that he couldn't have back in the biblical days. Even had a thousand wives, if you can imagine. He said the same thing. He said, it's just a chasing of the wind. Money is not everything. Proverbs 13, 11 says, dishonest money dwindles away, but he who gathers money little by little makes it grow. And in Proverbs chapter 23, verse four through five, it says, do not wear yourself out to get rich. There we go. Don't wear yourself out to get rich. How many times did I have to remind Elkie Brabble not to wear myself out in trying to pursue getting ahead, getting ahead, because it can rob you of everything else. Have the wisdom to show restraint. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. There's truth to that. Ecclesiastes 5.10, this is what Solomon, King Solomon, who I was just discussing, said, whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. Have you ever seen multi-millionaires and they just never stop? They're always purchasing this. They're always buying this. It's never enough. And you, 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 you say to them like, well, when are you going to stop buying? When is enough enough? And every one of them, when you ask that, this has been my take on it, my experience. They've said, well, I'm never going to stop. And I thought, well, why not? How are you going to manage this whole? They're never going to stop. And so <laughs> Solomon says, you never have enough. Whoever loves money never, ever has enough. That's a sad state of mind to be in. So here we see in the scriptures that God encourages us to stay away from attempts to get rich quick. So gambling directly appeals to covetousness and greed, which is basically idolatry. Because once again, you cannot serve God and money at the same time. One is going to master over you. So let's talk about the word gamble. I love to break a word down and get, get to the meat of it. Gamble is to risk something of value on events whose outcome is uncertain in the hope of obtaining something better. So we're going to revisit that definition at the end of this broadcast. And we're going to talk about it one more time. To risk something of value on events whose outcome is uncertain in the hope of obtaining something better. I imagined it's kind of like a, like a high, you know, like, oh, I'm going to bet on this number and I could be a millionaire in the next minute. And there's this great big high, kind of like ladies get when they go to retail therapy. Oh, this sale, I cannot wait. And you, you're so excited about this purchase and you're getting this. And then after the purchase is over, it's not as exciting. You wear that outfit the first time and you're excited about it, but then it goes in the closet. You might not wear it again. You know how we are. 
Gambling can stimulate the brain's reward system, much like drugs or alcohol can, leading to addiction. Um, so gambling, in essence, is not only a risk at losing your money, you risk getting addicted to it, and you risk compromising your walk with God. I ask you now, is it worth the risk? God wants us to have a healthy balance in our lives, in everything we do. Now, I personally don't play the lottery, and this message is not about getting on everybody about gambling and playing on the lottery. You have to do what God leads you to do. I'm just sharing what the Word of God says on it. But I personally don't play the lottery, and this is why. People were like, Elkie, are you serious? Even if the lottery was $50 million and you wouldn't even buy one lottery ticket? I mean, that, God's not going to send you to hell for that. I know that. And I'm not saying God's sending anybody to hell for gambling. That's God knows your heart. I wouldn't do it, but this is why I don't do it. You wouldn't even buy one ticket, Elkie, if the lottery was $50 million, just one $20 ticket? And I was like, no. That's Southern for no. No. I don't even want to buy one ticket. And they're like, what in the world? Well, I have no interest in that. And let me tell you why. I serve a mighty God who says that if I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto me. I serve a God whose name is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I don't need, I don't go by this world system, praise God. I go by God's standards and what he says about me and what he's going to do to me and through me. King David said, I am young and I am old and never have I seen the righteous forsaken or his seeds begging bread. Praise God. I serve a God who doesn't sleep or slumber. He's concerned about everything that concerns me. And I thank God that I'm entitled to Deuteronomy chapter 28 that says, um, I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed in the city. My hand baskets are blessed and everything I touch is going to be blessed. I'm the top and not the bottom. Praise God. I'm the head and not the tail. And that's all I need to know. Amen. I'm a part of God's heavenly kingdom and he will supply every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. If that don't set you free from this world system, I don't know what will. Yes, we invest. Yes, we have investments and things like that. And I believe you should, but it should not dominate your life. Amen. I want to read in the book of Malachi in the Old Testament, chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. This right here, when I read this, boy, this became life to me. And I said, that's how I want to live. So let's read it. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. God was telling the Israelites, he said, you're robbing me. And they're like, how are we robbing you, God? Because they used to give a 10% of their income. And then they decided over the years that they wouldn't do that. And he said, you're robbing me. And they said, how's that? And he says, you're under a curse because of tithes and offerings, the whole nation of you, because you're robbing me. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Praise the name of Jesus. This is the only time or place in the whole entire Bible, the 66 books of the Bible, that God says to test him. He said, test me in your tithes and offerings. He's talking about that. So I said, well... I'm going to do just what he says. I'm going to test him with my tithes and offerings. Now, when I say that, I'm not trying to say that God is a slot machine and you put money into the church and you get money back. That is not what I'm trying to say. Because God says, Jesus says in the New Testament, God loves a cheerful giver. And you will not find the word tithe in the New Testament. But God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall God give unto you. God loves a cheerful giver. He set the conditions back. If you give a tenth of your best goods, God's going to see to it that your crops raise up for those farmers. This word given back to God is a biblical principle that we should be practicing as Christians. Amen. And let me tell you this. I don't bet on anything but God's system. Amen. And, and, and his promises and what's found in his word. And guess what? 
Can I testify? I mean, can I really testify? I have never lost. I've never gone without. I've never missed a meal. Never had lack in my life. Never. All of my needs have been met and I've been blessed enough to give to others. Praise the Lord. Money is not going to have me. I'm going to have money, but it's not going to have me. You understand what I'm saying? I have no desire to gamble. I don't need to. I fully trust God as my source. And that's a good place to be in. He's proven to me his faithfulness time and time again. And I'm going to tithe and I'm going to give to churches and, that I attend. And I'm going to give to missionary efforts who are feeding the poor and sharing the gospel all over this world. I'm going to give to things that are going on locally to help people out. And I'll be doing this till I draw my last breath. You can believe that. I'm going to be given to God's true work on this earth. And there's no need for me to gamble with this world system. Why would I do that when I have kingdom connections? If you're a Christian and you know the Lord, you got kingdom connections. Amen. But I want to ask you the most serious question that I could ask you right now in your lifetime. So peel those ears back and, and, and answer this question to me. Are you gambling with your life? I'm talking about gambling, taking a risk with your eternal salvation. Because, beloved, if you've rejected God flat out, you don't want nothing to do with Jesus Christ and this religion and have no interest in giving your life to Him. I'm sorry, but you have lost already. And it's your choice. That's sobering. But you can change that outcome. It's not too late. If you're gambling with eternal life and are on the fence about your salvation, that's what I call risky business. You may say, well, I'll take my chances. Or, you only get one life to live and I'm going to live it to the fullest. Beloved, if that's you, the odds are not in your favor. Well, Elkie, I'm going to eventually get my life right with God, but I got some living to do first. I'm not quite ready because I, if I decide to really live for the Lord, then I want to do it right. I don't want to be a hypocrite and I'm not ready. Really? I ask you now, is it worth the risk? Because you are taking the biggest risk of your entire life. Because you and I are not promised tomorrow. You are seriously gambling with your life. I want you to know to put off the decision to accept Christ is to reject Him. With Jesus, there's no middle ground. You know, and, and God just kind of showed me this in... He just showed me this as I was reading and meditating on these scriptures. Let's say you're in a big group of people and you're gathered together and a bunch of pizza just came in the door. And for whatever reason, you're not hungry and you don't want that pizza right now. Maybe you're on a diet and you're trying not to eat bread or carbs or whatever. So everybody's going to eat this pizza pizza. It's hot, cheesy, gooey, got pepperonis, got everything in the world on it. And it's going around the room and everybody's getting pizza. And there looks like there's plenty of pizza. And it goes around and you said no. And then it goes around again. Do you want some more pizza? And you said no. And you're thinking, at the end, maybe I'll get a couple pizzas to take home because I'll be off my diet tomorrow and I can eat that pizza. Well, at the end of the meeting... When you come to get your pizza, it's not there anymore. It's gone. Because you passed up that opportunity that was passed around you several times. That was your time to get your pizza. Whether you got that pizza and you put it over to the side, but now the pizza is not going to be offered anymore because it's gone. It's the same way. Uh, God is going to come around in your life. And he's, that Holy Spirit is going to draw you and it's going to convict you of sin. And every person is going to have that moment where they make that decision to accept Christ or reject Christ. And we don't know how many times that we're going to get that opportunity. Okay? And it's almost like this too. I think about, uh, how are you? If you have get-togethers and you invite a certain group of people that always gets an invite, and they never RSVP when you put RSVP on the invitation. They never call you back. They never text you and say they're coming. They never show up to anything you invite them to. How many times are you going to keep them on the guest list? 
You're wasting your stamp. You're wasting your time. They are never coming to your function and don't even have the excuse that all they have to do is text and say, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm sorry I can't make it. Please invite me again. Just a communication. I will eventually come. But after a while, you give up on that person because they're letting you know they're not interested in coming to what you're doing. Well, in John 6, it says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Jesus is saying that. And I will raise him up in the last day. You see, the Holy Spirit convicts people of sin. He deals with them about living a righteous life and reminds them of the judgment under which people fall when they reject Christ. Like I said, God will give every human being a chance to accept Him. He'll draw every person by His precious Holy Spirit to receive salvation. He will. Do you believe that? Our God is a loving God. He says in John 3, 16, he says that he wishes nobody perish but have everlasting life. He don't want anybody to perish. He wants everybody to have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That meant every living human being on this planet, he, does want, he wants them to have eternal life through his son. So that means if he's a just God, He's going to go, he's going to visit every, give every person on this planet a chance to accept or reject him. Everybody will have a chance. And even in Matthew chapter 24, the Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the ends of the earth and then the end will come. So he shows us in his word, but the Holy Spirit is the one that draws you. I'd like to take a moment and thank the wonderful sponsors who make this show possible. Thank you, DE Developments, DE Black River Realty, AWOL Marine Construction, and all the wonderful people behind the scenes who so generously give to this ministry to help keep us on the air. Thank you so much. God bless you. d &E Black River Realty is dedicated to your real estate needs. We are committed to providing professional service in a timely manner for every real estate transaction. From setting the price to creating aesthetically pleasing campaigns to digitally and traditionally market your property. Looking for a luxury waterfront, coastal style community to call home? Bryce's Creek Harbor might be the perfect place. Whether buying, selling, building, or investing, give us a call today. AWOL Marine Construction specializes in building custom docks, decks, ramps, boat lifts, sea walls, and walkways. We are family owned and take great pride in our work utilizing only premium building materials. A custom seawall not only protects your shoreline from erosion, but can add beauty to your property. Replacing your current dock or designing a new one, AWOL Marine will construct a dock that's built to last. AWOL Marine Construction, Aurora. With over 35 years behind them, d and &E Developments LLC takes creativity and excellence to an extreme standard. Our craftsmanship and attention to detail makes our work stand out. Our commercial construction spans from single to multi-family structures to independent corporate architecture. d and &E Developments LLC has a track record of quality with a guarantee of trust. If you can dream it, we can build it. Our team is standing by. Let's get started. So everybody's going to have a chance and you will make a choice. It's your call. Please, please don't make the grave mistake of thinking that God is going to keep on pursuing you. You and I don't know how many times that opportunity is going to pass around like the pizza. You don't know how many times they're going to keep giving you invites before they take you off the list because you're telling them you don't want any part of it. We don't know the mind of God. We don't know how many times He's going to draw us by His Spirit. That's why you're gambling you're gambling with your soul at stake, and it's the biggest risk that you can take in your life. And if your luck runs out, beloved, ask any gambler, then what are you left with? Reality of the decisions that you made. Reality can be, it can bite. Amen. And you know, as a Christian, every time I go to a territory or wherever I go, I can feel 
um, the principalities ruling in that place. I'm getting ready to get real spiritual on you right here. But when I go to certain regions in, in the world, you can feel an oppressiveness when you walk through certain places. You can feel the sin and you can feel the territorial spirits that kind of dominate in that place. And one day I was walking, I was in a resort and you had to walk through the casino to get to the lagoon pool area. And we go through the casino and, and I'm a Christian and I could just feel all the lights are bright. All the machines are playing. They stay light and lit up and it's exciting when you walk in and everything's beautiful and everybody looks like they're happy and everybody's pouring drinks and playing games. And the, it's just, it's, it's kind of a positive light ex experience. But you know what? It's a dark thing that's going on there. There's so many people that are addicted. They'll pour you as much alcohol you, as you can drink as long as you're shelling out that money. They stay open all night so that you'll, you won't get sleepy. There's things to stimulate you all night so that you'll keep doing something that is getting you more addicted and more addicted. But it's your call about your gambling with your life. What's it going to be? There's only two real responses to Jesus. You accept him or you reject him. What say you? Don't be a risk taker when it comes to your eternal salvation. Please don't be a risk taker. So let's define gamble one more time spiritually from a spiritual standpoint. When you gamble, you risk something of value on the events whose outcome is uncertain in the hope of obtaining something better. Will you risk something of value, your eternal life, on events whose outcome is uncertain, on how many chances you'll get or how long you'll live, the event is uncertain, in the hope of obtaining something better. Well, I think I'm going to live my life for me because I think my way is better. It's more fun. I'd rather live life to the fullest now than to do what Elkie's talking about. Will you risk your eternal salvation over a season of having fun and doing everything you want to do? I can tell you, Solomon, King Solomon did that, who was the wealthiest and richest person on earth. And he said, it is meaningless, a mere chasing after the wind. And Solomon, in all his wisdom, at the end of the chapter that he wrote, the book of uh, the book that he wrote, he said in Ecclesiastes, he said, "It's a chasing after wind. Man should be content with the work that God has given him. He should be content with his life." I pray this message has touched you. I pray that you decide today to make your eternal salvation secure in the only one who can save. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you. I'm praying for you. Go to God while you still have a chance. Bye-bye.